As you guys can see, I've got the Jackson Bell 556 uh, recapped. I've also got the uh, IF transformer that I rebuilt back in place. And in addition, I rewired the other IF transformer as well. Just due to the uh, frayed wires, again, all the uh, resistors are in tolerance and all of the uh, paper and or wax caps, including the two electrolytics, have been replaced. Anyway, uh, powering this thing up, I found an interesting problem. I've seen it before, but I thought I would share it for folks out there that are new to the hobby and haven't uh, run across this problem. Again, you can see I've got a, a power transformer uh, temped in. As I mentioned before on my channel, if you elect to uh, follow any of my practices and or procedures, you're doing so at your own risk. Again, we're dealing with uh, lethal voltages here. Not having a schematic definitely puts me at a little bit of disadvantage. This circuit, though, is very similar to uh, some of the Zenith models. Uh, not exactly the same, but uh, close enough, I think, for reference. I should be looking uh, somewhere, you know, around 200 volts, plus or minus 20% would be my uh, educated guess on the B+. Plus. Let's power the uh, receiver up and uh, keep an eye here on the DC voltage. And you can see the uh, DC voltage rise. And you can hear the radio playing. So with the B plus voltage less than what I anticipated, it looks like we might have something drawing too much current. Let's uh, check the current. This yellow lead is my uh, center tap location coming from the uh, fill coil winding here, which is in the negative side. Let me break that connection. I'll bring you back and let's look at the current flow itself through the uh, receiver. I would expect this receiver to be somewhere between uh, probably 40 and 60 milliamps max. You can see I've got the meter hooked up. I'm in series with the uh, fill coil winding here. I broke that connection point, so the meter is in series to read the uh, DC current. You can see we've got the meter um, on the uh, milliamp scale. And again, I would expect to see somewhere probably 40 to 60 milliamps max. Let's power this up and see what happens. And you can see the current rising. Radio's playing. Again, the uh, volume itself is just a little bit low. And uh, you can see we're just under uh, 14 milliamps of current. So we don't have a tube and or a leftover capacitor or anything else causing excessive current that I can see. Normally you would just pull a tube. So um, let's look back at the uh, rectifier tube again and look at the DC voltage at that point. And you can see the uh, DC voltage rise quickly but drop off. So we've definitely got something going on and I think the uh, rectifier tube is actually going to be the problem. But let's make sure we've got 5 volts to the filament of the uh, 5Y3. In my case, that's what I'm using. I don't have the 5W4. So let's confirm the AC input to the filament here. Again, you can follow along in the picture in picture. You can see I have the meter set for AC voltage now. Got the meter plugged in over here on this side to the uh, 5 volt winding, which is the uh, white leads here that attach back to the uh, filament itself of the uh, 5Y3. Let's power this up and uh, make sure that we're close to 5 volts, plus or minus 10%.
and you can see indeed we are. We're at 5.43 with my uh, test transformer based on my uh, line input voltage of around 122 volts. Let's uh, take this rectifier tube out and uh, place it in the uh, tube tester and see what we've got. Okay, you guys can see I've already got the uh, tube in place here. I've already checked it for shorts. Now let me go to the uh, standard rectifier test and uh, we'll check the first plate and see what we have. Again, we have the uh, filament voltage set for 5 volts. And you can see on the tube tester the rectifier test good here. Let me move the uh, one selector A back up to uh, position number 5. And you see we're still testing good. For those new to uh, tube testers, again, you're not really stressing the uh, rectifier tube like you are in the uh, receiver itself. Let me readjust the uh, filament voltage. At this location, I'm going to uh, drop it down to uh, 4.3 volts. Let's see how the tube reacts to a, a reduction in the uh, filament voltage. Many times you can uh, pick out a weak rectifier tube by reducing the uh, AC input. Okay, I just dropped that down to um, positions 4, 11, and 4.3. Let's go back to the standard test now. And we'll flip up to uh, position number 5. So you can see this tube's definitely uh, dropping off. Let me go back to uh, 5 volts. And back to uh, 4.3. Just reviewing my notes where I measured the uh, tube off camera just a bit ago. The uh, one plate, I'm seeing a reduction of about 10.5%. Uh, and on the other plate, I'm seeing a drop in emissions of about 28% uh, with the uh, voltage reduced. And that's a good indicator we have a weak rectifier tube. Let me uh, plug in another known good 5Y3 and uh, repeat the test and see if we have a drop off here at uh, 4.3 volts. With my replacement 5Y3 in the uh, tube tester, we'll go to the standard rectifier test. I've got my filament voltage set for 5 volts. And you can see the reference here. I'm going to go ahead and drop it back down to 4.3. And you do see just a little bit of a drop off, but also a bit of recovery. Let me switch to the other plate. And there we are operating at 4.3 and at 5. So you can see this particular uh, rectifier tube is a lot more stable. And it's probably not going to have a big voltage drop like I'm seeing in the weaker 5Y3, even though it tests good on the uh, tube tester. I saw roughly a 0% change on one of the plates and about 3% less emissions with the reduced voltage on the other plate. Let's get this uh, rectifier tube back in the receiver and look at B plus voltage and see if we're any closer to uh, 200 volts DC. Okay, let me power the uh, receiver up now with the replacement rectifier tube in place. 
and uh, let's make sure that we're closer to uh, 200 volts plus or minus 20 percent And you can hear the receiver playing now. That's a good sign. Again, no alignment's been performed at this time. And I'm just north of uh, 200 volts uh, DC. So uh, I'm happy with that. Again, another indicator. Uh, just don't trust your uh, tube tester. This could also occur for other tubes as well. But I found it to be somewhat common with rectifier tubes. Again, they're just not stressed under load so much in the uh, tube testers themselves. Let me validate the uh, DC current itself through the uh, transformer back through that center tap winding. I'll break this connection here and uh, let's look at DC current now and see if we're much higher somewhere 40 to 60 milliamps. Powering the receiver back up and you can see the uh, DC current climbing. And you can see the number continue to uh, rise just a little bit as the uh, tubes warm up. So we're close to uh, 40 milliamps here at 39 milliamps, a big increase from what we saw earlier. I'll probably see a little bit different reaction once I get the 5W4 tube in place. And again, I still need to get a permanent uh, power transformer in place as well. Just one I've been using to uh, test the receiver. Anyway, it's cool to see this radio play again using my uh, temporary power transformer in addition to the work that I had to do internally for the caps and the uh, IF transformer work as well for a new coil. I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully folks out there that are new in the hobby found this uh, informative. Again, if you're going to follow any of my practices and or procedures, uh, you're doing so at your own risk. Everyone out there, uh, take care and stay well. Thanks again for viewing.